Hi friends, Calamity, fresh out of content ideas here, and today we're gonna make a tier list for Genshin Impact again, woo, cause I'm out of ideas. Before everyone gets mad at me, this tier list is purely just for my personal preference when it comes to characters' playstyles, and which characters that I think are fun to play, but also like pretty solid, in my opinion. So don't get mad at me if I put your favorite character in D tier or whatever. Well, I mean, you can get mad at me, but I'm just not going to care. Uh, anyways, let's get started with the tier list. We have Traveler, and I'm going to put them both together. So Traveler is actually really good with, the, with their new Dentro element, um, becoming one of the few characters so far uh, that is a dendro support allowing you to do the, the popular ag aggravate teams and hyper bloom teams if you're deciding to go for that route and i just think overall that they're pretty solid so i'm gonna put them in a both of them i'm also gonna kind of go through these characters kind of fast so my reasoning is gonna be like really really short so bear with me here albedo i just made a video about him talking about how i think he's a good off-field dps support character but it's geo geo is what holding him back from being an amazing support so i still think he I, in my video i said he was a or b so no surprises there he goes to b amber everyone's favorite favonius outrider i think that's her title she has actually a, a a unique build with her baron bunnies however for new players or free to play players getting her constellations is going to be super difficult so most players won't even get to play amber like that in the bunny style bunny bomb style however i still think it's something neat and different compared to other archer characters and i would actually love to see another type of character have some sort of like an archer character where they kind of like spawn something and they have to shoot it so i'm actually gonna put amber in b i think she is an interesting character with this build and it actually works like it's it might seem like a meme but it actually works once you get the whole thing set up ayaka goes s for so many reasons but just straight up having one of the best bursts in the game uh not only that but you can make her normal slash uh, charge attack damage do a lot more if you're using her with shenha so yeah just overall just very solid dps barbara um a lot of people like to build her as a deep dps but most people will be using her as a healer. It's very annoying to freeze yourself when you're using her elemental skill. So we put Barbara in Z. It happens quite often. Beto! Beto is an underrated character. Maybe not so underrated these days since Electro is getting more popular. But her burst is amazing when going up against uh, multiple enemies. Landing her elemental skill perfectly and getting big damage as well as more energy is very satisfying to pull off. So I'm going to put her in A. Bennett! I don't like the character personally, but he is still an amazing support to nobody's surprise. I don't think I need to explain why. I think it's been overdone a bajillion times. Chong Yoon is a weird character that screws over his team. Well, certain teams because of his uh, cryo infusion when he uses el his elemental skill. However, his elemental burst is actually pretty good for some nuke damage uh, early on. It kind of falls off later, unless you have Shenha to, to buff his damage. But uh, he definitely has fallen off and he used to be one of the more popular characters, especially in the international team, but he has been since replaced by Raiden Shogun or other variations of it. Unfortunately, see. Diluc. Diluc's actually a really fun character to me because of his combo, uh, his combos with you interweaving both his normal attacks and his skill properly to get the most damage especially if you have the constellations which give you even more damage for playing the loot properly uh he is an overall fun character to to play and he still does great damage i'm gonna put him in um a just because i think doing the combo rhythm is fun diona solid support has a lot has shields has heals and buffs your team with elemental mastery uh, and her burst is similar to Bennett's where it will apply uh, cryo, for, in her case, in a little field. So it's good cryo application as well. I'm going to put her in... I almost want to put her in A. Fish has been getting nothing but better because of Dendro. Great electro application. Uh, if you have consistent um, electro and consistent Dendro application, 
you can get aggravate spam but if you get also hydro application then you can do hyper bloom spam with her and that's actually pretty good not only that but she still has her other builds like the machine gun fish build um, and she is just overall just a solid character with so many different builds and playstyles you can do with her and she's just she's just great Dendro only made her better. She's going in A. I don't think this is going to surprise anyone, but Ganyu, S, amazing AoE damage. Uh, I learned recently that, hey, she can be a pretty good secondary DPS or even a support if you want to do the double Ayaka and Ganyu. Hu Tao, S, amazing damage, works with a lot of different supports and only... You know, that number is only increasing as more characters are getting added. It used to be Jing Cho used to be her favorite dance partner. Now you can use Yulan. Overall, again, very fun character to play. I like doing the the uh, charge attack spamming with her. And I also appreciate she's one of the few DPS characters in this game that actually doesn't rely on Bennett or even want a Bennett on her team. Just because she is zooming around, it's really hard for her to stay in that field. Anyways, so she frees up your Bennett to go on a different team, and I can appreciate that, especially in Spiral. I still wish I had her. Jean! Despite having a really low pick rate in the Spiral Abyss, I still think she is a very solid support. Lots of healing, lots of animo application, easy to swirl for that damage bonus. I think she's just been solid. Kea! Arguably, probably the better of the free characters you get initially because of his cryo application. Although it requires you to be up close and personal. He is great as a sub DPS, has a very low cooldown on his elemental skills, so he gets his burst pretty frequently. Um, and he only gets better with uh, consolations, although those are really hard to get, just like Amber or Lisa. I'm gonna put him in B. Kaching! Kaching, we have seen the rise of Kaching comps in Spiral Abyss thanks to Dendro once again. She went from B or C tier definitely to an A or even S. I haven't personally tested out this team comp to say if it's an S yet, but I do think she's at least at the very least an A from what I have seen. I do want to build my Kaching for a aggravate comp in the future, but again, it's just so time consuming for artifacts and i still need to get a better weapon for her building up the talents etc etc klee regarded as one of the best characters ever when she was first released however she has since fallen off she's still good and she still has certain team comps that work for her but she is a very hard <laughs> it's kind of funny it kind of fits her personality but she's a very hard character to work with like a lot of characters cannot work with her because of how she does her damage I'm gonna put Klee in probably B. Lisa! Lisa has a 0% pick rate in the Asia servers when it comes to using her in Spiral Abyss. I'm just assuming that's because most people have built their fish, maybe even Kujo Sara or Kuki Shinobu as an ele uh, electro off field DPS sort of character. But that doesn't mean Lisa's bad. Um, in fact, she's actually pretty good and provides a lot of solid buffs your team and her electro application is really great. Um, I would have put her in D tier originally, but again, Dendro has made so many characters uh, relevant. I actually want to put her in B. Mona! Mona is your everyone's favorite damage amplifier. She is great in freeze comp teams, giving you tons of damage with her burst. Uh, very easy to build. I'll put her on B. Ningguang, unfortunately, is a character I never hear about anymore. <laughs> that makes me sad. I think she's still okay to use, but I think it's the lack of teammate synergy she has. Like, she can't really work with Goro because Goro only buffs your character's defense. So she doesn't work with him. And then she can't work with um, Yunjin because Yunjin only uh, buffs normal attacks. Ningguang does damage from her burst and from her charge attacks. So she's not getting any help from the, the latest Geo support. She needs some help from other kinds of supports. And I just don't think they're in the game quite yet. Not to mention her artifact set pieces aren't that great. Again, Husk of Opulent Dreams was made for Albedo and as well as other Geo characters, but it doesn't do anything for her. She's still probably the only character that's still rocking the archaic Petra 
Um, but even then, that set isn't really that great in general. So unfortunately, she is just a character that's kind of been forgotten about by by Hoyover. So I'd like to see, hopefully, something in the in the future uh, for her. Noel, uh, Jack of all trades, master of none. She is a great. She has a shield, but has a long cooldown. She can heal, but she's not the best healer. And she can do damage, but Aratagi Ito exists, and well. A lot of other DPS characters exist. That doesn't mean she's bad. She's actually really great for new players. Since, again, all-around character. And she only gets better with her consolations. Uh, when she, especially when she gets to C6. That's when she becomes DPS mode. Uh, trying to build her as a DPS before then is kind of... Yikes. Uh, Jack of all trades. Goes right in the middle. Chi Chi. Very long cooldown on her skill and burst. I've built her as a physical dps for memes at this point because i don't need another cryo healer diona exists as well as you know all the other healers i have bennett built up i have sayu i have gene i have so many other healers that i just don't need to build another healer i have her as a physical um damage healer and it's been kind of fun too bad it just doesn't work well in the uh, spiral abyss especially with all the bosses but maybe I can try to figure out something in the future. That being said, when it comes to her kit, there isn't anything too special about it. Um, she kind of just heals. That's it. There's nothing really much to her. So I'm going to put her in C. I haven't put anyone in D yet, <clears throat> which is uh, interesting. Maybe I'm, I'm too nice. Maybe I, I don't want to put anyone in D. <laughs> Next up, we have Razor, um, who had a recent event based uh, on his character. We got to learn more about him, which was nice. Well, I thought it was kind of funny though that the weapon we got is a pole arm, which has nothing to do with Razor. I thought he would also get like an event weapon, but turns out no. Um, Razor is a physical DPS, not a an electro one compared to Sinnoh. I heard he has some sort of interesting overloaded comp where you use a C6 Bennett to convert his damage into pyro. And then when you activate his burst, because of the wolf attacking, he's constantly overloading, doing the overloaded uh, damage thing. I don't know how well that works. I'd be interested to try it myself, but I don't have a C6 Bennett and I don't think I want to. So maybe in the future, if there's some sort of other way of getting pyro infusion on attacks, maybe I'd like to see it, but... Uh, maybe we could do something with him with Candice. There's, there's potential. Uh, to try to make him do something other than physical damage and seeing if that works. I'm sorry. I'm actually going to have to put him there. While he has interesting team comps and his kit is very easy and the sounds are very satisfying to use, he's just not that great of a character. You know, now that I think about it, I'm looking at Ningguang in C and I might as well put her down one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ningguang mains. Uh, Sucrose. Probably everyone's first four-star animo character that they got, and very easy to build. Just elemental mastery and energy recharge, just like most animo characters. Uh, very good CC early on. Can use it multiple times thanks to constellations, and provides a nice elemental mastery buff to your team, which these days has only gotten more and more popular. Elemental mastery on everything is is the way to go. I'm gonna put her in C. Uh, she's very close. Either C or B. Um, the only reason I put her probably in C is because her pull on her ult just doesn't feel that strong when you compare it to, like, say, Venti or even Kazuha's hold, um, skill. Feels like it has more oomph. Tartaglia goes to A. Um, I personally like his playstyle. He is still the only character that dual wields a weapon in this game. I still want more characters that do that. He also has a bunch of teams that he works with. He has a vaporized team. He has an electro tar charged taser team if you want to go that route. Uh, I don't know how well he would work in some sort of dendro setup with bloom, but uh, probably not. Um, and he's only gotten better. They've given him his signature weapon and uh, a, long, a while back he got his uh, artifact set and he's just an overall solid character. I have actually been getting back into using him as I was exploring Sumeru and yeah, the damage numbers are pretty good. He's just been a solid character and I and he doesn't even need constellations to do well. Venti has fallen off. 
Um, he's still good for grouping up enemies. It's just that Hoyoverse keeps adding more and more enemies that are that can just ignore it. We keep getting those gigantic machines like they can just ignore the pull from his burst. He's still a good character when it when he works. Just he doesn't happen that often. I'm gonna put him in B. Jean Ling is gonna go automatically into S. I don't think I need to explain that. Explain why that much. Just solid character. She has a lot of weapons she works with, a lot of teams she works in. Very easy to play character. Does a lot of AoE damage. Provides a lot of pyro application. Zhao. I don't know how much better he got with that one artifact set. He has that new artifact set uh, that was released along with Ayato a while back. And like, I'm sure it's good. I just don't know how much better it is. But he, again, is still a character that lacks single target damage. He's great for groups of enemies, but not single target. And then like the Spiral Abyss where they just keep throwing more and more bosses in there. He's getting less and less use. Now, of course, you could still make him work in a in a boss fight with the single target setting. But all he does is like this big AOE and you're, you know, you're just doing that over and over on a boss and not getting much out of it. I'm going to put him on B. He's also still the only character, by the way, that benefits from plunging attack damage buffs. There's still no one else that does that. Jing Cho, A. Um, if the sacrificial sword didn't exist, we would have to build Jing Cho with a lot more energy recharge, but because of it, it makes energy recharge needs a little less. Um, since he gets to use his skill twice, his skill has a ridiculously long cooldown, and this helps get his burst more consistently. Jin Yan, uh, happy birthday to the character, but, uh, I don't know what to do with her. I mean, sure, she could be a physical DPS if you want, but, uh, Zhang Li, S. I've already made a video on why he's an amazing character, but just quick version, strong shield that lets you ignore. 99% of the scheme's enemies and attacks. So you don't actually have to learn how to dodge properly. <laughs> Rosaria. I think Rosaria has always been in just some like an okay spot since she has a very niche. She does a very niche thing that no one else in the game does yet and that's to provide your team a crit rate boost. There's no other support that does it for the entire team at least that I can think of. And she's also pretty good for uh, reverse melt comps if you're going for that. Um, but I'm still just gonna put her in C. I think it's just like okay. Eula for me personally goes to A, uh, even though I don't own her. She is arguably and pro actually probably the strongest physical damage dealer in the game still, although physical damage these days isn't really popular. Um, she has a really fun and long combo that I'm still learning how to do. Uh, once I actually pull her w one of these days and build her up, I'd like to actually be able to do it. Uh, consistently. I find doing combos fun to do and she probably has one of the longest combos in uh, Genshin out of all the characters. And she also does a lot of damage. Yan Fei has always been a solid pyro DPS with a good mixture of normal and charge attacks. Lots of pyro application and even at C4 she gives herself her own shield when she uses her burst. Um, allowing you to free up a, a shielder slot. Like, you don't have to use Zhang Li with her. You could, but it's not necessary since she has her own shield. And it's a pretty good shield. Uh, at least I think so. Unless you're fighting some, like, really tough bosses, then maybe not. But she's just good overall. Kazuha, I don't think is needs any explaining here. Just S. He is just solid character. Brings your enemies together. Gives your team a lot of damage. Yoimiya, for me personally, is gonna go A because I know my place. <laughs> like, Hu Tao is definitely gonna be better than Yoimiya in most cases. I think against flying enemies like the Electro Manifestation and certain other types of enemies, Yoimiya will outshine her, but most of the time, as long as the enemy is on the ground, Hu Tao is just gonna dominate. That doesn't mean Yoimiya is bad or whatever just because she's an A. It She's actually a lot of fun to play, does a lot of damage. Um, I just wish Yoimiya's constellations were better, so I'd have a reason to pull for her again. The constellations, I mean, they're nothing crazy. Like, Ku Tao's C1 is an amazing constellation because it allows you to constantly do her charge attack without having to worry about stamina. That's a big DPS increase and a game changer when you're playing her. Regardless, Yoimiya's been my main DPS 
uh, to go to when it comes to single target and continues to do so. Sayu goes into C. Fun character to play as. The rolling is fun, but other than that, I don't know what this cause of a thing is here. What is this? Cause of Beto? I don't, I don't know why this is here. What is this? It's going to go NA. Uh, while we're on the topic of uh, characters that don't apply, I'm also going to put Nahida and Layla here just because while they have been announced and they're probably leaked their elemental skills and, and kits and whatnot, I haven't personally tested them out yet, so I have no idea how I'm going to like them or how good I think they are just yet. So just for now, they're just going to be in the NA. I'm sure I'll do another tier list video in the future where we uh you know i'll actually place them in a tier raiden shogun it's gonna go s raiden shogun has been a, such a staple for me ever since i pulled for her she has made spiral so much easier uh both with her big damage and providing energy to the entire team and she's also a character that if you invest in the more you invest in more and more she just gets crazier and crazier uh, unlike Yoimiya, because I could get a C6 Yoimiya and I won't see, like I'll see bigger damage numbers, but I won't see that much bigger damage numbers. But if you invest in a C6 like Raiden Shogun or a C6 Ganyu or a C6 Hu Tao, you're going to see a huge spike increase in damage numbers when it comes to their constellations. That's the difference between uh, these S rank characters and the, and the A or B rank. But yeah, solid character overall, very fun to play. Probably still has one of my favorite burst animations. Kujo Sara is going to go in NA for me personally because I do not own her. And while we're on the topic of characters I don't own or like I haven't really played with, Kuki Shinobu is going to go in there. And I think that's all because I have played the other characters that are still on here thanks to like character trials and like those events where we get to like try out other characters. Uh, Kakomi. Kakomi, I don't remember where I put her previously, but nowadays she is great. She is absolutely great. Probably one of the more popular supports these days, used in a lot of teams, not just Freeze team, but you got um, Electro Charge teams, you have the new Bloom team, she's probably going to work great with our latest DPS character, Nilo, she's, I mean, she just keeps getting more and more value over time with more and more characters that can utilize her or just want her in the team. Very, very solid character. I am definitely, I definitely wish I would have gotten her uh, when she had her rerun, I just... I lost my 50-50 there. Alloy goes in D. It's the only collabor collaboration character Hoyoverse has ever done. And they botched it so hard just by not giving her constellations or even a decent weapon. I don't know why it's just like this. I hope that Hoyoverse can talk to uh, the developers or whatever for the licensing agreements here and try to get something for her. Because she's just, she's just there. Like, what, what am I supposed to do with her? I recently built my Toma and I'm going to put him in, in D uh, as well after finally building him and having a C6. His shield is decent and it is a shield. However, that's all it is. I'm actually really disappointed at his pyro application. Um, I guess his low-ish cool, cooldown on his elemental skill can help with that, but man, I thought his shield would provide a little bit more pyro application when I use it with other characters. I was disappointed to find out it doesn't really. Um, but he is like a decent shielder. It's just, again, characters like Zhongli exist, Diona exist. Uh, and there's just going to be more and more characters that have a shield. So just having a character whose kit is nothing but a shield is not that great, in my opinion. Arataki Ito goes in B for me. Uh, I kind of had this conversation before, but I'll mention it again. Arataki Ito is a solid DPS character and a very fun character to play as and use. However, it's just that he only has one team that really works with him because of the way he plays. Like, it's just Geo mostly, and then maybe like a Bennett for more damage or something. But I really wish there was more to do. Like, Geo is such a boring element in this game. It only has Crystallize as its reaction. That is it. Just Crystallize. There aren't even a lot of Geo support characters that are interesting to use. Like, a lot of them are just, here's more damage. Here's more damage. All right, that's it. Like, I, I really wish Hoyoverse would, when they're done with all the Denjo stuff, they come back to Geo and make it a much more interesting element to work with. Goro goes into C tier because he, again, 
I just got done mentioning this. He is just a very basic support. Uh, Shenhe goes into A tier. And the only reason she does so is because, well, she's niche. She only works with cryo characters, meaning she has very limited usage. But when you can use her with characters like Ayaka, Ganyu, Changyun, uh, you can even do some weird uh, cryo infusion and make some non-cryo characters do a lot of cryo damage here, but that's for another time. Um, but a very cool character, and I recently learned that I should have recommended the uh, recent event weapon we just got for her, since she does want a lot of attack. Uh, hopefully we get a rerun of her soon, because it's been very long since she's been back in a limited banner. Yun Jin is actually going to go up to B tier just a little bit better than Goro, because while she is just a more damage um, support buff character, uh, at least she has the mechanic similar to Beto or Candice where it's like, you know, if you time the skill correctly, you get big damage and more energy. And that's just a fun mechanic that rewards you for actually uh, learning how to play the game and not just having a big beefy shield to ignore everything. You know, you actually do have to time your skill for big damage, more energy. And I think that's a really fun concept. I think Yaimiko goes in the A tier. I think she's just a very solid support. Again, Dendro helps make her even better. I would have to redo Yai my Yaimiko's artifacts, which I am in the process of doing, for more elemental mastery, because now she can constantly proc aggravate. She has her little fox totems, and I'm going to make a video on her uh, relatively soon, since she's supposed to be having a rerun uh, in the future. So. I'll probably talk about more about this uh, later on, but she basically lots and lots of aggravate, lots and lots of hyper bloom if you go for that route, giving her lots of more, lots more damage basically. Uh, Ayato, I got to play. I don't own the character, but I got to play him in the trials, in the events, and stuff. Very very fun character. Has a lot of different um, support characters that can beef up his damage. Um, I like the elemental skill. Just. Very similar playstyle to Yoimiya. That's probably why I have him in A tier. Yolan is S tier. I think everyone knows this by now. Strongest character in the game by far. And just does a lot of damage as a main DPS. Uh, and can be used as a sub DPS if you want to go that route. Just And she even works with a 3 star weapon. The 3 star weapon, the slingshot, actually works well with her. I don't know how people are going to feel about this one actually. Uh, Haizo, I believe, is actually A tier. I think he does a lot of damage while having a fun and unique playstyle. He's not quite S just because his damage numbers aren't quite there yet, I, I don't think. But yeah, his elemental skill, once you get those stacks, does a lot of damage. His burst does a lot of damage and it helps with grouping a bit. And he works with a lot of teams because he is Animo. Well, he doesn't work with Dendro, unfortunately, but and is just a very fun character to play overall. We're getting towards the end here. I'm trying to hurry this up a little bit just because we're... I mean, I'm looking at the timer and we're almost at 40 minutes. Take uh, Tignari is next. I am going to put him at A. I do think he is like S tier DPS capability because I've seen like so many people do like a lot of damage with him, but I don't like his playstyle of like the really fast charge shots. I don't know. It kind of makes me, I don't know. I, I, I don't like it. It, it. Maybe I need to play with the character more and I sure hope I get to because he's on the standard banner, but He's like a Yoimiya, but with charge attacks. It's kind of weird, but maybe I just need to play him more. Kali, we're going to put in B. I just think she is the standard when it comes to Dan Dendro sub DPS or just Dan Dendro application. Just very simple character to use. Applies Dendro, does her thing, and then you just move on. Nothing really to it. Next up, we have Dory, which I'm going to put in D, which stands for Dory. I'm just kidding. Uh, Dory is a weird character that I don't know how or like who to use her with quite yet. Like, I don't know. I'm still building mine and there's still a lot of work to be done to try to see what her capabilities are. But like when it comes to electro healing, Ku Kuki Shinobu already exists. So unfortunately, I don't see any use for our favorite uh, Sumeru merchant. Next up, we have the latest character in the game, which is going to be Nilo. And while her damage is in insane and you see a lot of damage numbers on the screen, I found part of her kit to be quite confusing. And she, again, she has very limited team comps right now. She'll probably bump up to S 
once more Dendro characters are released, but because of the way she is designed to only work, well, part of her kit only works with Dendro and Hydro, you can still do her in like standard freeze comps if you want, or vaporize teams, or electro charge, but she is still a character that has very limited team usage. Um, and I think it was a weird choice to release her so early with not so many Dendro characters in the game. Next up, we have Sinnoh, who, well, a lot of people were calling him the five-star Razor. Razor isn't really an Electro DPS, but this guy is. This guy is pure Electro damage, and I can, like, I understand why they called him the five-star Razor when they saw his abilities and whatnot, and it makes sense, I get it, but what he offers instead of the other DPS characters that we already have in the game, like, he's probably just fun to play from what I, from what little I've actually you know, used him, but I don't know. I just think he's he's just so okay. And then lastly, we have Candice, who I'm gonna go ahead and put in D tier just because it it hurts me to put her there because I spent so much effort building her. I don't know, like her her buffs. When I first looked at her, they look so good on paper, but it's just... I've said this before, but I feel like she's missing something. Like, Hoyoverse is gonna add a new artifact artifact set piece for her that'll make her much better as a support character. But right now, the damage on both her skill and burst are pretty low, even though... Even if you go hard on HP. And yeah, I tried using her with my Yoimiya... Yun Jin and Jing Cho, and well, I didn't really notice much of a difference when in the damage. Like maybe it went up like like maybe 10-20% higher, and that's not much. I just need to test out the character more and see, but the only thing I like about Candace is her skill, which is fun to do. Again, just like Beto, just like Yun Jin, when you time it right and you get the full power of her skill instantly that's a great feeling maybe as more characters are released new artifact sets are released we will see something that will change a lot of these characters but so far i gotta say the four star characters that hoyoverse has been introducing have been very lackluster but i can appreciate if they're trying to do something different because again kakomi is a character that when she was first released you know had i made this tier list video a year ago, she'd be down here in C or D tier. So you never know, these characters that are on D tier could be a tier or two above, and some of the characters you see up here could be, uh, you know, C or D by next year. You never know. Um, but that's going to do it for this tier list. Thank you for watching. Uh, let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you guys in the next video.